Hi, just another uh, video rendering test video because this one uh, was quite um, highly requested and I'll probably link in uh, previous ones I've done where I did uh, 4K rendering tests with my GTX, NVIDIA GTX 1050, uh, yeah, 1050 card. Um, now, I got faster than real-time uh, rendering with that with using Vegas 15, which is my editing tool that I edit all my videos with. And no, I'm not changing my editing tool for lots of various reasons. Anyway, quite a lot of people said that I should get a higher-end card and that will increase my rendering time. And I'm of the opinion that I don't think that's going to be the case because the GTX... Um, uh, 1050 series kind of thing with the 1050 chipset being the lowest and here it is here if you want to have a look uh, yeah there we go NVIDIA, Nvidia GeForce GTX 1050 can't remember what card doesn't matter it's the chipset and it's only got like a couple of gig of RAM it doesn't have a lot of RAM on it a lot of people said uh, get a faster video a better higher end video video card like a 1060 at least or a 1070 or even a 1080 and that will increase my rendering time and also the RAM should increase the rendering time. Now I am of the opinion based on some research I've done that that is not the case because the rendering, the GPU accelerated rendering has nothing to do with the amount of memory in the chipset or the number of CUDA cores that are on the NVIDIA chipset. The um, NVIDIA chipsets have a dedicated hardware engine section in them, which is entirely different. You know, if you have your CUDA cores and, and your memory doing everything over here, there's another physical chunk of silicon on the chipset that does the video encoding. And apparently that, from what I'm led to believe, and we're about to test it, is that that engine is the same on all the chipsets so in theory i believe it shouldn't matter whether or not you have a gtx 10 a bottom of the range gtx 1050 or a top of the range gtx 1080 so i was able to acquire a gtx uh, 1070 um please don't laugh it's it's a fine gtx 10 um, a 1070 video card. It's an Aero, uh, what is it, an MSI Aero. It's got 8 gig of RAM compared to, I think, 2 gig, is it? Um, CPU Z. Here we go, sorry. I'll just uh, run. I, I don't think it tells you how much memory you got, does it? Oh, yes, it's got 2 gig. There you go. So I'm upgrading from a GTX 1050 to a GTX 1070 as an experiment to see if it makes a difference in rendering. And I, I'll happily stand to be corrected if it does make a difference, but in theory, I don't think it should because that hardware chipset that does the encoding is exactly the same. So, if we, I just done a test here, the same video rendering thing as before. It did it in two minutes and 52 seconds. I was doing some stuff in the background as well. But anyway, that's our benchmark. So I can actually run that again if you like. Here we go. I'm using my standard uh, profile and I'm reading and writing to my solid, super fast solid state drive, even though that does not make a difference. I normally render from my external Synology uh, NAS drive and it makes no difference whatsoever because the bottleneck is not in the drive as much as people think. Rendering, there you go. So that's the GPU rendering. You saw that before. Video encode, here it is. It like goes up to 50%. Maybe it'll utilize more. Maybe it'll be quicker with the 1070. I don't know. But I've heard that and um, the theory goes is that it shouldn't make a difference. And there you go. It does use CPU and stuff like that because I'm also video capturing 2560 uh, 1440p video here at the same time anyway so there you go so I will now install the GTX 1070 card run exactly the same test see if it makes a difference I'll be back okay here we are with the GTX 1070 card there it is from MSI with 8 gig as opposed to 2 gig on the 1050 card I just ran the exact same render test and it did it in 2 minutes and 43 seconds that's technically 9 seconds quicker than what we had previously but I've had around about this figure when on the previous card the uh, two minutes 52 before or whatever it was was a bit over because i think i was doing some stuff in the background anyway um it's basically i do, i'm gonna call it is that it is no quicker well, i'll just go in here and show you it live again all right here we go now as you um saw before we were using just under the two gig of uh dedicated gpu memory here 
we're using basically exactly the same amount of memory. See, it's not utilizing that eight gig of memory. So to people who thought that adding the, having the extra memory would make a difference, nope, zippity doo -dah. And the video encoding is around like jumping like 13, 21%. Yeah, it's, um, there is less, it's using less of that uh, chips of the video encoding, however that metric works. I don't know how that actually uh, works. But anyway, it basically, um, it technically it seems to be, you know, it has more capability on the video encode, but once again, it's not using it. So that's the thing. So there you go. Um, my hunch was right and my research was right that it didn't make any difference. So, and you, you can claim the nine seconds, I need to do multiple tests like with you know, absolutely perfect, pristine conditions and all that sort of stuff, but it's basically no difference. Um, that's a really <laughs> zero difference there between the two. So there you go. I hope that's answered the question about if you're doing GPU video rendering uh, using the NV Inc encoder inside the NVIDIA chipsets, at least with Sony Vegas, and I'd be surprised if it's not the same result with other uh, video rendering and transcoding programs that use the NV Inc engine, um, that there's no difference there. So you might as well, unless you need the video card for gaming or for like, you know, your multiple screens and there, I can't notice any difference in speed. I had no issues running my three big monitors here. Um, there's no difference whatsoever. So um, you might as well buy the bottom of the range 1050 card if you just want that NV Inc encoding capability because buying a high-end 1070 or a 1080 um, looks like it's going to make no difference whatsoever. So I hope that answers the question. Finally, no, there is no difference. So thanks for asking. Um, there you go. I'll let it finish. I'll waffle on for another 28 seconds. So there you go. It just can't use whatever it is that video encoder I, I think it might be able to encode like two streams at once or something with the higher end cards. They unlock an extra... No, I don't even think they unlock an extra core, do they? Like in terms of like a video encoding core or whatever. Yep, there we go. Two minutes and 45 seconds with the screen capture makes no difference, as we noticed uh, before. So if anything, it's only slightly, slightly quicker, if anything. Uh, so it's certainly not worth double or triple the price. Like, I think it's at least triple if you go for like a 1080 or quadruple the price. It's not worth it. Um, so you just need that 1050 chipset. You need that Pascal chipset, it's called. That's the code word for the chipset used. It uses the same NV Inc hardware encoder on all the chips. So there you go. But I'll, I'll do the same test using um, HEVC, which is the H265 codec we can give that a bell so but i believe it's just going to be exactly the same uh result sorry i didn't try it on the previous car but i have previously and it's basically the same regardless of whether or not you encode to uh h264 or h265 on vegas on this uh using the nv ink encoder there's no difference whatsoever look it's still only utilizing a tiny amount of GPU memory, tiny amount of video encoding. No, I don't believe that's any of the Sony settings or anything like that. I should just be able to make use of that. Um, oh, and CPU is still doing its thing because um, we're screen capturing, so that doesn't really, that doesn't really do it there because um, I'm not using GPU screen capture because I had bugs with that. So I turned that off. I'm doing CPU screen capture. So, or no, no GPU acceleration of the screen capture anyway. So there you go. It looks like um, it's not going to make a difference. So it looks like around about the same time it's going to finish up at for H.265. So there you go. I hope it cleared that up. If you're looking for a cheap solution for uh, video rendering using the NV Inc engine, if you're whatever video programmer encoder that you're using, if it supports that, um, it looks like just the bottom of the range 1050 is going to do the business. So there you go, finally solved. Catch you next time.